There we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fridays at Five. I'm Karen Taylor of the Color Vowel Chart. Today's topic is to share something of a show and tell. It's a Color Vowel show and tell. Um, and so with this has been a, a new feature. We started it last month. It's an opportunity for us to really show what we're doing with color vowels when we teach. Um, and I thought I would invite uh, Julie, who's been with us lately. Hi, Julie. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, Julie's been in the Color Vowel Basics course, as well as now uh, more recently in our level two workshops. And we keep getting to see that she's got some kind of wide, great layout of stuff in front of her. We're sure of it because she's able to pull up, you know, like I'm able to pick up my grab bag here and show you my fun little zebra. You know, I can do that and say, what color is, ooh, what color is this zebra? It's a disappearing zebra. Um, you know, so I have lots of little fun things here, but I'm wondering what Julie has in her room. So I've asked her to join us today as kind of a kickoff. But um, I'd love to know who else would like to show or tell something that might be a story, an anecdote, uh, a win, maybe some kind of a, a small victory that is worth sharing regarding instruction or the use of color vowel theory or, or sorry, the method itself, um, blue canoe successes. What else? We'll stick something in the chat if you have something to show and, sh so, so and chell. Show and tell. Robin, what's going on when I say cho and sell? <laughs> uh, nice, nice metathesis. Uh, Victoria Franken has a whole uh, book about those. Okay, so that's when like Paschetti and all that stuff. Yeah, when we switch the sounds and re reassign them. That's what I just did. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not seeing a lot of active stuff in the chat. So we'll just kind of come with what we have. Um, I'm gonna share my environment. This is my brand new house with the wind coming in <laughs> and my invisible zebra that I can show or my invisible duck that I can show you. So I'm gonna play with a bit of this uh, virtual stuff and I'll show you what I'm doing with that as well. Okay, so we can we can share, wonderful. And, um, and Dawn, thank you for reminding me that you can share things from last week as well, okay? Hi, Julie. Oh. Hi, so why don't you tell everybody, I, I love hearing what you do. Um, and I know they will too. Just let us know a little bit about who you teach, what you do, uh, what your day is like. I'm talking here about you as a teacher, um, <laughs> how you manage your day, your night, your morning, and <laughs> how you okay. make that work. Well, today was my last day to get up at 2 a.m. because we have daylight saving time coming up. Woohoo! I can sleep until three. I teach kids <laughs> in China. So you can see my VIP kid thing here. So I know I know there's at least a couple of other VIP kid teachers in the in the whatever. Now I've made that crooked. Uh, but I teach children in China um, as young as five eh, and as old as 16. Yay! I, I prefer the older children. I always used to work with adults and uh, my desire to work from home was greater than my desire to not work with children. And so I thought I'll give this job a whirl and I'm in my third year and it's actually 90% of the time I love it. <laughs> so I've got one kid at a time for 25 minutes. And um, so this is just totally extracurricular. So it's, it's English learning in the context of some science, social studies, grammar, math, whatever. Um, and it's, it's really interesting, all the curriculums there. So I'm not doing major lesson planning. I'm just kind of prepping and getting ready. Um, somebody else, oh, so I go to bed at six, so now I'll be able to go to bed at 7 p.m. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> uh, but we're empty nesters and it works. So, um, a so I see you have, a, you have a map behind you you have two, you have three maps behind you. <laughs> I do. I have China because I like to find them. They get, they're tickled. You know, I, I've learned some of the major cities. So it's like, are, are you near Shanghai? Are you near Beijing? It's like I'm in the middle. <laughs> so sometimes I'm quick sneaking onto Google maps and finding it there and then going, oh, I found you. And they're like, ah. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about our precious names in our class the other day that, you know, it's like that sense of you found me on the map That's right. and, and it makes a connection and um, Wonderful. That does make a difference. So, and I have the U S here so I can show them I'm in North Carolina and, and behind my, my uh, color vowel thing here, I've got the world map and I often show them that 
my daughter lives in Alaska. You know, I'm clear on the, the East Coast and my daughter lives in Alaska. So it's kind of fun to give a sense of where we are. Okay, um, now hold on, because I just watched you magically take the US map. No, the, no, the big, the small one in the corner up above. Oh, this one? Yeah, and then you just casually stuck it. Oh, you, I see what you're doing. You've got clips on there. And then you have what, push pins back there? there yeah, this one is actually a nail because I wanted it skinny. It's easier right. to whip This it is on the there. stuff I care about. I swear, so, okay. I, this is so about funny. I wanna know it's So not I've got my binder pin, clips nail. on here, you know, so I, can, so I can whip this thing up on a couple of push pins and, um, and then I've got a couple map behind my this map is actually a big whiteboard that I realized I don't use that whiteboard. I use little whiteboards, you know, yeah. that I that I pull up so I can get them close to the screen. So. Okay, so now you're getting I'm gonna go ahead and mute Liz there because she's in the car. Mute. Mute. There we go. Um I noticed you're in a corner and I just wanted to say, I've been talking to a couple of YouTube type people lately. They talk about the power of a corner behind you. And so just so you know, you happen to be living <laughs> the standard wow. that there's right. something just in terms, you can fit a lot in a corner visually. And, and I think that's what I'm seeing here with you. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. So it, you know, the map's a little skewed, but not bad, you know, and I, I even can turn my, um, you know, my computer a little bit if I, if I need to do that. And when I'm in the classroom, the, the screen isn't as wide as it is here. That's so, um, so now tell us what's in, can you show us what's in front of you? Oh, you know, I wish I could, um, well, you just held up this cool little whiteboard. I okay. That was okay. So this, this is one of the things in front of me. Um, I've got a, a, a little doohickey with a, there's a, there's a feather on there. There's some chopsticks in there. There's dino. This is the mascot for a VIP kid. Okay. Um, I've got a paintbrush. I've got a oh, toothbrush. Wait, what, do you, hey, no, wait, what do you do with, a, I know what you do with the toothbrush. Compound word, you know, tooth and brush. But oh. we, we talk about painters, painters paint paintings. Um, and I, I have my wow. ah sound, not ow. Ah, ah. <laughs> um, I got a few critters in here like, you know, what, what hop? So I've got a, a frog and, uh, and these are on, I got a whole bunch of markers thinking, oh, I'm going to use colored markers to do lots of things. It's like that took way too much time. Forget it. So now they hold my finger puppets because it takes too long to get them on and off your fingers. And so I thought I like the puppets, but I don't like the time it takes. So Julie, you um, okay. are always thinking about time. How long are your sessions? 25 minutes. See, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, and sometimes it can run a little bit longer. Okay, here's another one of my favorite props. This is for the voiced and 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 so, uh, I, you know, I've got some kids <laughs> trained where you know, like, eat F, go. Now go. Because lots of kids Oh, so say, for the voicing, yeah. Right, foul. I, foul. No, that's five. You got the, f get the v in there. Um, so yeah. that was a favorite. Okay. This is one I don't use so much. The bossy E, um, um, you know, the long E. I, the, the lessons teach it, the curriculum do, but yeah. say your name. Um, gotcha. um, I use this a lot because they forget plurals or third person S's. Um, and then this is for the famous big a pig. -a. Bigga, pigga. Bigga, pigga. Ooh. Hey, so um, when you hold that up, are they pretty good at stopping doing that? Um, once I've got them trained. Um, <laughs> so know, awareness they, is really good. I mean, you it, just hold really, it up. And... It is awareness. And I mean, some of them have no idea what I'm talking about. But if I demonstrate, you know, the big pig rode his sled. Um, now, which one, you know, and then I'll, I'll do it right, and then I'll do it wrong. It's like, which one? This one, that one. And, and, and I do lots of thumbs up, thumbs down yeah. in my classroom, too. Great. Um, I've got the little, um, so this, this is an idea that came to me, a mini whiteboard. It is a yeah. picture. I printed up photos, and then, you know, after a while, they get kind of trashed, and I'll just print up another one. Yeah. But... Uh, I do that. And then I, I tried doing it with this 
with a continuous and I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, so, okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom and level up now because you're you're pulling up all these cards and I know you don't just have them all lying out. So how do you have those organized? Um, okay, <laughs> or maybe so they are of, all lying out. I don't know. Well, some of like some of the cards are standing up beside. So my computer's sitting on a little stand, mm -hmm. and uh -oh, and uh, so I've got uh, this is sitting beside my computer. No. It's got, oh, this is such a fun one. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> um, and you know, the difference between seeing and looking, you know. Um, That's so great. I've, I've got money in there, to, you know, to show, to talk about cash. I've got a five, a 10, and a one. Um, what else? I have a kite because we talk about flying kites. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I need you to be quiet and listen. <laughs> Did you draw that? I got, I asked one of the other teachers, can somebody um, Photoshop these? I think I found the pieces and I asked another teacher, can somebody Photoshop it? And sure enough, That's somebody classic. Could. I think we need isn't to it, isn't market it great? that. <laughs> it is just, it's, you know, and they laugh and they'll go, you know, they get it. They really get it. Um, I do some things like, so I've done a lot of phonetic respelling mm -hmm. to help. I mean, they're learning words like emperors, empresses, empresses, ancient, you know, whatever. Um, so I do minus. And, ah, and even before I thought about color vowel, I was, you know, the word stress or the syllable stress. That's right. Was, was making some sense. In That's right. Not mine us, but rather minus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I have a lot of other funky little props like that and I keep them uh, so that's next to my computer so there's a little slot where some of these can stand up and these few that I showed you I literally keep they're they're flat on this little stand right in front of me yeah. because I use them all the time a lot I've got flags um of some you know some the U.S. China Britain some of the countries that we I mean we're talking about flags photos um, I'm, I really like 2D props because the 3D props just take up a lot of space, but I've got a lot of those too. Um, mm -hmm. So down by my knee, I've got a drawer that has um, a lot of, you know, like a oh, rock. We were talking about somebody saying, I'm stone deaf. How well does a rock hear? You know? Yeah, exactly. So I noticed you, you pretty much hold everything up. Do you ever use um, document cameras or anything like that? I don't have anything. Yeah, like I think it seems efficient the way you're just able to know you exact you know exactly where you're presenting, mm -hmm. and it doesn't take that extra time for your 25 minute session. Right, and and you know we were told it's like you can kind of break that 2D barrier mm -hmm. by by getting close. You know, sometimes you might need to do. It. This is all the Legos I own. But, I'm watching yeah. this guy come at me over and over. Yeah, yeah. so so kids like Legos. Okay, so. The piece de resistance. Exactly. Right? So I, I've got to tell you this. A few years ago, a friend. So I took the um, the Tefl uh, the the Celta course. You know, in San Diego, the killer six week, whatever. And while I was there, I heard about chance, and I thought it's just no way. That's weird. <laughs> That's just weird. And, uh, and, and maybe I'd heard about it some years before. I'm taking the chant class now and I'm so digging it. Uh, uh, but this friend told me, have you heard the, about color vowels? And I think, I think she mentioned cup of mustard. And I just thought, That's just weird. Mustard. Cup of mustard. I just, no, I don't know anything about it. I don't it. even like, like mustard. Don't even, I, actually, I like, I like mustard. But <laughs> And I just, I just dismissed it because, you know, I didn't need it. And at that moment, I wasn't actively teaching anybody, but somehow I fell into it again. I don't know how I heard about it, but I had sent out some emails in the Facebook community and it's like, should I do this? And of course you were all like, yes, you should do it. <laughs> so I got my, got my chart and I ordered the cards and then I, I um, took them and got them laminated so I wouldn't kill them because everybody suggested that yeah. and then I was trying to figure out how do I get to them quickly you know in my 25 minute classes how do I do this so I kind of fiddled around and fiddled around and here it is 
Okay, Ta-da. this is the thing. This so is this what inspired is my- me to invite her to do this, everybody. <laughs> Robin, enjoy. <laughs> this is my Dollar Tree basket. Um, I wound up putting a what do you call that? A, a can in the bottom. Okay, let me let me grab something here. So I took. Um, Greetings, Charlene. We had just have a newcomer board. to the room. And I, Thank you know, you. I, I measured how wide this was uh-huh. and, and then I cut strips and then I measured how deep I wanted it to be and I accordion folded it. Okay. And, and these are pipe cleaners. You could probably do it with some other kind of string or something like that, but I literally kind of hooked the pipe. Okay, Dawn, Dawn wants you to hold that up all the way, the pipe cleaner part. I forgot, I can pin her. Up higher. There you go. Yeah, you can pin and I can pin. What can I, what am I thinking? Let me pin her for everybody. Here we go. Spotlighting for everybody. Ooh, okay. Yeah. How so did you do it for everybody. Um, I'm the, I'm the master, so I can sp- uh, spotlight the speaker for everybody. Yeah. When you're the master. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> you're you're master. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. I didn't realize that you had the, the separators or pipe cleaners Oh my gosh, that's really so. I, I hooked him at the bottom and then I hooked him at the top. And I actually that's, that's said, 40 it, old, right? Yes, yes. And I did it so, so they're, you know, a little bit like this. I started to do it flat and I thought, no, I need it to be a little bit of an angle. And then Karen encouraged me. I was always doing this. And Karen said, so why aren't you showing this side? And I went, hmm, okay. Yeah. So I took the challenge and now I have them picture side up. And, and I put this can down here in the bottom because it's sitting, I use these for some little legs on here because, you know, it sits like this and I didn't want it to fall back. So there's a little can of tomato sauce in there for free. And it's Um, it's heavy enough to make it feel solid. Yeah. 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 And it has been, it's just been amazing. I've got several kids very well trained and Okay, don't tell anybody this, okay? Um, when I start teaching a new student, I, I rarely use this. So I've, I have taught lots of students, but I rarely use it the first time because I wanna decide whether it's a student that I want to love, <laughs> you know? Um, I, I would rather have my day, I teach nine classes a day. I would rather have my day filled with students that I really enjoy teaching rather than students that I'm just, Okay. The 25 You're saying that you, you are starting to decide who you want to work with. Yeah. I, you know, I'm at a point <laughs> where I can be sort of selective. Okay. Let me see if I can get this here. So I have taught 7,838 classes. Oh my goodness. Wow. I have taught 1,149 different students. So it wow. seems like every week, you know, this is three years ish. Yeah. So, so you every, can start being discerning. Right. So, so I don't want them to love me, all of them. I don't want them to love me. So, and I have found, um, I feel like this has made me this and the awareness of, um, the, the emphasizing of the, of the syllables mm-hmm. and then also the words, I feel like I have made myself much more attractive, marketable, whatever. Um, and my charming personality, <laughs> you know, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> but, but I, I'm having parents give me feedback saying, you know, at first my daughter didn't know what to do with you because you kept correcting her pronunciation, but you know, very sweetly, yeah. uh, but they love it. They love it. And, and this has been a big part of, you know, what, makes my teaching um appealing i guess so you have you have a very small piece of uh real estate in your zoom window uh (laughs) this small amount of space my hands disappear when i go over there um you know and so you i it's a you're you've really mastered your space and i think that's part of why people are able to decide they want to love you and study with you and <laughs> yeah. you utilize that space really thoughtfully mm-hmm. okay i had to tell you one of my dirty another dirty little secret here okay ah yes i, I have a, oops, a lot of kids have a problem they they really say they'll go silver pen silver pen so i finally went let's go with the word that they could do so i made <laughs> this is just from folks silver fish um and and it works 
Julie then, is my rebel, uh, know, you know, right. my sixth edition color valve. Okay, and, and I <laughs> and I did tan tan man for one girl, but I, I do find I rarely I rarely use that one. But that's that's my only addendum. <laughs> yeah. Julie, um, I have a question for you. You yeah. said that VIP kit has uh, the lessons already made up for you. So how do you incorporate the color vowel chart into those lessons? Because obviously they don't have the color vowel chart in the you lessons. You know what? I don't use the, the chart in the lessons. And I had a boy the other day. It's like, and it was my first time to have him. And I thought, if he becomes a regular, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And I even, um, I made a smaller version. Again, I did a photo. But, you know, by, by making that small, you can, you can do anything, you know, that bridge that gap. And I, I will probably wind up doing that, but he was, he was doing something with um, silver, like fish, fish. And I thought, oh, he needs the chart. But I, I wasn't ready to invest that time in him with a student that I didn't know yeah. might be regular or not. So I don't, I don't use the chart. I primarily and whipping out the cards. Are you constrained by the curriculum? Would they not want, I'm just, now I'm just curious about how VIP kid works, but. Uh, they wouldn't care. It's okay. just a matter of time. Um, yeah. So you're, to... you're your own teacher. You can do what you, what you want with the curriculum that's given to you. Right. It's like, it's usually 25, 28 slides. Yeah. Uh, you know, so basically a minute, a slide to try to get through. Um, and some of them go real quick and some of them is like oh oh we're running late and and you know I might be teaching until 27 they really don't want us to teach beyond 27 minutes mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes it's barking up you know 28 minutes like I gotta go <laughs> here's here's the last slides look at them with mom <laughs> see ya that's great, that's great. Uh, so but it's oh, been it's a really great this is rich. You know, it occurred to me, we have a couple of visitors in the room. Um, and I see Charlene, I think you're, I haven't seen you before. So welcome. Yeah, uh, this is, and we've had a couple of others that I just want to be sure that for those, and Nancy, nice to see you. You know, I don't think I've seen you here before exactly. Um, this is a weekly gathering of teachers who teach with the color vowel chart. And I should have my chart behind me as well. So I will stick it here above my shoulder. Um, you know, so it's a visual tool. And what, uh, what we've seen Julie breaking out with are these image cards that allow us to in isolate the images that we see behind us. And so that's what we're doing here. So this is, I thought maybe um, we could, maybe Julie, if you would lead us through a warm up. Um, since you've been doing that a lot lately for my courses. Just a second. Carl, how, did you, how did you do that? How did you make this? This is all part of my level? show and tell, man. <laughs> She's a new tool that um, is pretty funky, but I'll be talking about that shortly. So okay. it does allow okay. me to do some fun things where I can turn things off and on. Um, wow. But yeah, so it's, it's getting fancy, everybody. You know, I might need a black cat and I can just stick it right up there and um, more on that another time, though, because I do think it's worthwhile to spend just a moment warming up with the chart. Um, and I'd like to hand that off to, since you're all set up, Julie, as a kind of a, a the finishing gesture, could you okay. warm us up with the chart? All right, I'll try to get my gestures okay. right. We're all going to mute ourselves, and we'll just follow along as if we were students for a moment, okay? All right, here we go. We're going to say the, the letters, and then uh, we'll, I'll say it, you say it, we'll say the the phrase e e e okay so e e green t e okay i i e. silver, silver pen i e. a a gray day a, a. great a. 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 red pepper a. Ah, ah, black cat, ah, 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 black, all the sock, ah, 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 Auburn dog, ah, oi, oi, turquoise toy, oi, or, or, orange door, or. O, O, rose boat, O, U, U, 
wooden hook, uh. Boo, oo, blue moon, oo. Uh, uh, a cup of mustard, uh. Er, er, purple shirt, er. I always get mixed up on this. Uh, ow, ow, brown cow, ow. Good job. I, I, white tie, I. And these are the sounds of English. The these sounds. are the sounds of English. <laughs> all righty. Hey, nicely done. I know you didn't expect me to put you on the spot like that. So let's all give her a round of applause, right? Thank nicely you. done, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we, I wanted to just see here, we have a couple comments from, well, any, any comments to Julie, just from the, the group here along the way, Robin, any one, one sentence on why her students were struggling or why students do struggle with a uh, pin of silver pin. Uh, before nasals, uh, I've noticed that uh, some Chinese and uh, Thai speakers will lower the vowel in English. You raise the vowel like uh, pen becomes pin. But in, um, uh, I think, uh, some Chinese uh, dialects, the pin becomes pen. Interesting. Mm. That's fascinating. So you solved a problem, Julie, and, and I applaud that. That's great. Yeah, so oh, by, 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 substituting, by substituting fish, uh, she got rid of the N. So it stopped being exactly. a problem. Nice. There's oh, actually really? a pin pen merger in English. Some right. Southern American that's, English speakers even have that merger. That's, that's right. absolutely right. You could solve it for those teachers too, if someone found that easier. Yeah, I know. If I were right. doing a next edition, I would definitely move toward fish. I love the image. So uh, Charlene has a question. Oh, uh, I am a Chinese. I've been here for 30 years. But mm -hmm. earlier, I just found out that N is very hard for Chinese people. It is it's a beginning sound, it's no problem. But the mm -hmm. end sound, when I say John, my son say John, not John. I say, I say the same thing, he said, no, you sound weird. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I figured out because we don't use the tongue to touch the upper gum. We, if it's the end, it's the starting sound, we touch the gum, we say mm -hmm. Nancy. But John is ending sound. When I say John, and I, I don't put my tongue and then on the tongue, on the gun. So maybe yeah. it's sort of like a dark L. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, it's a nasalized too. vowel is enough. John. Correct. So John. after I figured out, I told my son, listen to me, John. He said, right, now you got it right. So it's like an L. We don't, because our uh, syllable is just, you know, the pronunciation, just we don't have that ending sound. Like after the sound, we don't really put the tongue. And for ing, I was figured out uh, earlier too, because uh, N, you touch the gum at, at the front, at the front. But if the ing, the root of your tongue touch the back of your gum that you can pronounce very well. Yes. So what about all? Super all. Aware. Yeah. Oh, I see the O-N-G. My students have, they, they can do ing, ang, but ong, ong. They, they struggle, O-N-G, song. Yeah. yeah, song. Like me before, I cannot say, uh, like a, I sing a song and I, I sing. This is totally different, right? So right now I kind of can pronounce them uh, more correctly because I am purposely to watch out for my tongue. It's yeah. I sing and I sing. Just the tongue, you use the front part and the back part to distinguish them. And uh, I struggle for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good awareness. Uh, this is also something that a, a lot of Spanish speakers have trouble with. So um, they might use a, a nasalized vowel, which then turns into an M or an N or an ang indiscriminately. Uh, Karen, in fact, um, uh, turning into an M, wasn't that a Yucatecan thing to, to do? Do you have an example? 
Yeah, there's a word uh, for bread, which is pan, P-A-N, pan. But in that part of Mexico where my husband's from, it's pam. You know, if yeah. it's the end of the sentence, quisiera un pan, pam, pam dulce, pam. So then they turn it from the N to the M and they're not aware of it. Right, and, and, and the, so. the fulcrum for that change is what um, Charlene was talking about uh, is just a nasalized vowel which mm -hmm. could be any nasal. You don't know whether it's an ang or an m or an n. And uh, that's why saying jong is not helpful when you're uh, listening to it as an American uh, or saying with song, you, is it song or song or saw or which is it? Uh, so getting them to actually touch the roof of the mouth. I can, can I do it? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> touch the roof of the mouth with, with the back of the tongue or the front of the tongue. Um, right is uh is something that uh uh is very helpful to be become aware of and, mm -hmm. and some dialects of chinese you also have uh the l versus the n problem so uh uh in the south um uh you might have trouble with uh you know nail and uh or uh, uh well the, the story that that i found shocking at the time because i was unaware was the student who came to me and i needed his phone number uh, for this form. And he said something like um, 301, seven lie, lie, two <laughs> lie, three lie. And I was like, why? What's lie? Yeah, it was lie. Nine. Yeah. And it was nine. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, yeah that's, that's fascinating. Uh, one time is so funny because I am a pharmacist at, at the pharmacy. And um, I talked to a patient, say, Are you on fire? He said, Am I on fire? I should pronounce, are you on file? Yeah. I have to touch my, to the front upper gum to yeah. pronounce it. Are you on right. fire? I like that. Yeah. That's a good one. It's so funny. So I figured out I have to really watch out for that. Else. Wonderful. <laughs> well, let me share actually on that, on that topic, a couple of things going on these days in English language training solutions. We're uh, in the middle of our now four week course on, on sound awareness that Dr. Barr is teaching. Uh, so she's up here in the right corner of my screen at least. Um, and we have coming up our upcoming, uh, let's see what's coming up next. We've got pure practice starting next Thursday. We've got another edition of pure practice for learners and teachers. So if you're here as a teacher who's also a learner, whoever you are, it's, it's open to everybody and their families and children. So it's a big family friendly event. We, we drew over a hundred people last week. Uh, we broke the Zoom room. We have to actually pay for a bigger Zoom room next time. And we, so we have, have now to mastered. Sure we register early, is that? Uh... Yeah. Well, now, uh, now that we're here and I'll mention it, you can register through our normal way on our site. So I'll just send you there. But now on our learners page, we actually have a subscription form so that you can sign up once knowing that, I'm gonna put this over here in the chat. You can sign up on that subscription form and whether you're a learner or a teacher or both, and you'll get a notification about the event with the link. So you don't have to use Eventbrite and sign up anymore, okay? Um, so that link right there is to our website. And, and we're going to do that for Friday at five as well, aren't we, Karen? We are going to do that for Friday at five soon. So um, oh, everybody who comes weekly, you'll be thrilled because you won't have to keep waiting. Uh, you know, where's the link? How do we get here? Did I not? Did I not register? Did I register? So thank you. I was wondering if you can put it up again. I can. I I didn't get a copy of the link. Yes. Oh sure, it's over here in the chat. So did you find that over in the chat? Yes, I got it. Thank you great. so much. Great, great. You're so welcome. Um, so along those lines, we're basically today's a show and tell day. We're so glad Shirley's here, my co-author. Hi, Shirley. Good to see you. Um, we're showing and telling. And I want to thank Julie for showing and telling. Give her a little visual applause, please. Thank you. Uh, Don mentioned from a previous session that we'd, we'd chatted. And so Don, I'd love to have you show or, and or tell something. And uh, who else, if you have something to show or tell and you really, you know, you know you do, mention it in the chat to me, either public or private, and I'll make sure we, we get you up next in the line. Okay. Hi, Don. Hello. Can um, you tell us a little bit about where you teach, who you teach, and then share? Adults, um, Northeast Alabama Community College. Um, 
right now all virtual still. Um, we're supposed to be able to come back hybrid, well, high flex, but I have absolutely no idea how some students could be in the room and some online and the people in the room are doing an in-room experience and the online are, it's, so right now I'm not encouraging mine <laughs> and, and they're fine. They're fine with the, the mm -hmm. virtual. Um, as far as color, color vowels, one thing that I've been doing, um, Tyson is, I work with Upward Academy, well, through Tyson and Burlington English is kind of a spine, I guess, that, that they use. And I've been putting together just on scrap paper. Um, yeah, I guess I could pin myself. Here, I'm gonna spotlight you. So I can see what I'm showing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, um, just basically going around and I, I words that are related to what I'm doing um, for each lesson. Um, sometimes at the beginning, this is a beginning, a beginner lessons on school um, locations, using it as a chant as well. Um, as far as I put little notes to myself, where's the blank? And then, you know, it's right here. It's, or it's, it's over there. You know, so if I'll have name two students and cafeteria words that we've already practiced, you know, and they'll have to say, okay, where's the cafeteria? It's over there backpack. Maybe I'll flip it where it's the backpack. You know, it's right here. And so we've also talked about the, the colors in related, related to the chant. Nice. For my advanced group, um, you can see the, the planning takes a little, a little bit more work and there's cross outs and scribbles and, and things that as I'm doing them, ooh, that didn't quite work. And, but I, they were kind of blown away as I put in phrases, follow procedures, poses a risk, need to maintain, good production, um, it's spoiled, don't eat it raw, do it properly, keep it warm, nice. um, as we worked around with that. I gave them for homework, um, we're supposed to be doing six hours a week, but we're doing two Zoom classes of two hours, and I'm hoping that Blue Canoe plus some other things would get them an extra hour. And I gave them the vocabulary list this time, through, through Messenger and asked them to use the Blue Canoe Dictionary to figure out what the colors were. And I had one student who's a retired lady and doesn't have kids and <laughs> has all the time and she did everything and, um, and got it done. And, but just to, she used it on her phone, but I showed them how they could also get it as an extension on their, on their laptop. Um, I recently discovered, um, oh, Another a, a chant or whatever that I would use with my higher group as we worked with third conditionals. Um, if I had known, I would have folded it. If I had known, I would have bitten it. If I had known, I would have carried it. And just, and it works with your DTN is what I call them, the past participle, because I love uh, X word grammar. If anybody has, is familiar with that at all. And that, um, can I share my screen real quickly to show something on Jamboard? Sure. Um, didn't know if that needed to be special. I wanted you to know that um, this coming Thursday when I do pure practice, I've got a chant in there coming up uh, about, you know, if, if I'd known, da 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 A little longer. Yeah, so we'll have some fun with that. Um, as you, who was it, Julie, that mentioned about the S's. Um, and working with which ones go with does and which one go with do. If you're familiar at all with X word grammar, you go, okay, do you go to work every day? Yes, I, it's not a, I don't have a question mark in a capital letter, but if you're making it a positive sentence, that's what it looks like. You go to work every day. The do is still there. It's just hiding behind. And if I change the subject to be Tina, I change my X word, to does, and it becomes Tina goes to work. And when you make the question, you just pull the does out in the front. Does Tina go to work? I've got little tiny, little tiny finger things, not near finger puppets like, like Julie has, but part of expert grammar also deals with a, a question hand where you've got your, if it's a thumb question, you've got your, I'll stop sharing. I just. It's just, it was so visual for my students to see where that S comes from. 
Yeah. I, it's, a, it's behind. The Dew family is shy. And so it hides behind. The only time it hides is in the affirmative. If it's negative, it's out there. Tina yeah. does not go to work. Whoops, I didn't know you could spin them. She does not go to work. If it's a question, you know, it goes out in front. Does Tina go to work? It's just if it's a affirmative statement that it hides behind. There we and go. so that just helped my students to see that. Um, the question hand starts with the, the question word on the W, but the index finger is always your X word, whether it's did, was, were, will, and there's 15 of them with jingle bells. Do, does, do, uh, have, has, had, do, does, did, am, is, are, was, were, can, could, shall, should, will, would, ought to, might, must, may. Oh, we have like another session coming up, Don. You've got to teach us these little songs. This is great. And then you've got your subject. And then if you're using the, the do family or a modal family, like can, could, will, should, it's always going to be the base verb. If it's the B verb, it could be the ING. Um, if it's the have or has, you've got the DTN. And then your pinky finger is all the rest of your is all the rest of your sentence. I wish my hands were bigger and I could I click can a lot better, but okay. Um, so I, I the love the, fi the fingers. because And that's just because them. that's what I had. I have scissors, I have staples, I have scrap paper. So so that, that's what we did. And so, so, so Don, question, tell us, yeah, tell us X word grammar. I'm, I remember you've shown it to me, but is it just, is X dash word grammar.com or how can we find out about it? Um, I, I, I just looked it up and, and uh, it's, you can go straight to it. There's a website. So I, you just there is a lot it. more detailed than this. Yeah. It gets really deep and, in, and I just scratch the surface and that's all my students need. And that's all I need. It's 1960s um, it's uh, linguistics. So uh, sort of transformational. <laughs> but getting uh, the key for me was really seeing how that, where, where does the do does, where does the does come from? Where did it go? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. really there all the time. It's just hiding behind. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Uh, well, good. We, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm going to just mention the, the reference. I just wanted to spell it correctly for people, but X word grammar, there's a nice listing in Wikipedia. You can learn about it. I'm just trying to keep our references over here in the chat. Uh, Don, lots of neat stuff that you're sharing there with us. Um, I'm loving it. I can see again, you know, just making use of your screen, keeping things literally handy hand. You put the hand in handy, right? Right in, yeah, just right in front of your face. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm going to remove that spotlight. Good. Hey, it's thank you so much. Um, I know that Jennifer has something to share. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, guys. How are you? Um, I have been experimenting and learning about uh, things in Canvas, uh, and it's, uh, it's a tool that we're going to be using in our uh, level two and level three teaching practicums. Practica, practicum. Practica. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna be plebeian about it. Practicums. So, um, and uh, it's the e-portfolio feature of Canvas, and um, it is something that you don't really have to wait until you get to that level, if you're going to that level, it's something that you can use if you're taking courses with us. Um, at uh, ELTS it, it, with ColorVal, if you're on Canvas um, and you want to start collecting uh, videos or um, things that you create uh, when you're um, taking classes with us and you want to keep them either to create a private portfolio that you can quickly find these things or if you want to create a public facing portfolio that you can share with colleagues or you could share, um, you know, if you're job searching, something like that. Um, the one that you'll be creating <clears throat> for the um, teaching practicum uh, with us is you can make it public facing and we're hoping it'll be something that you could definitely use as a, a, a link if you're um, uh, you know, searching for jobs if you're doing interviews and they want to see examples of lesson plans or um, video. Um, but it's something where you can start collecting from all your courses if you want to. And um, I know we've been using Flipgrid 
um, for the video um, starting in April. Uh, instead of Flipgrid, we're going to be um, doing uh, videos uh, right through Canvas, so it'll make it even easier. But um, you can go to if you if you did a, a chant or something in rhythm and chants class, and you really want to save it. Um, I believe you can just download it from Flipgrid and then you could upload it into your portfolio. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly what it looks like. And then um, as you know, somebody looking at it and then I'll, I'll show you sort of the behind the scenes, um, how you put it together. And I, ha and I have a link on um, the, uh, for the help, uh, the help section of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. The help section of um, Canvas, where it, it takes you, there's a video and it takes you step by step on how to create your own portfolio. Okay, just the for nice a little context, about it, Jennifer, one mm -hmm. sec. Just for a little bit of context, because I know some people aren't aware of what Canvas is. Um, uh, right. Yeah. So assumed everybody knows what Canvas is. <laughs> Jennifer's very excited about Canvas. So, um, you know, I let her go for a few minutes, but I thought I might provide a little, a little bit of context before we do that screen share, if you don't mind. Um, when you study the ColorVal approach with us, because we are a company that trains teachers and learners in the ColorVal approach, uh, we offer courses for certification. And when you study with us in level one, we start using a platform called Canvas to organize assignments and to get feedback on those assignments. And if you've been with us for a long time, you'll know that we have just started using Canvas. We were using things like, like Google, um, what is it called? Classroom. Google Classroom. So what, what Jennifer's about to show us is a way to, especially as we move toward level two certification, when you get into the teaching and coaching practicum, there's a collection here of videos and tasks that help demonstrate that you've really implemented uh, the principles and the practices of the color valve approach. Um, and it certainly plays another role over here in the training seminar if you decide to be a trainer with us. So that's a bit of the, the frame for what Jennifer's showing us. Thank you. Can you show us? Yay. Thanks, Karen. Thank so you. excited about it. <laughs> I am. I am. So yeah, a lot of you, if you or if you're teaching at um, colleges or universities or even in in um, public schools now, you probably use some kind of learning management system. Blackboard was the standard for a long, long time, but Canvas is sneaking up and and stealing <laughs> clients. So um, anyway, so let me find my window. I just buried it under under Zoom here. Okay. Somebody's dog is not very happy. I can hear somebody. I thought that was your dog, but you don't have one. I don't have a dog. <laughs> I have a sleeping cat <laughs> right there. Yeah, how do we get one of those? <laughs> you don't want this one. She's a... Okay, so this, this is, uh, if you made your, uh, let me sort of narrow it a little bit. If you made your um, portfolio public uh, and you gave the link to somebody, um, this is what they would see. And this is just a quick little uh, trial one that I threw together. Literally, it took me maybe you know 20 minutes to make this. So um, this is my color val, val portfolio. And you can see that there's, you get to have a homepage where you could put your picture, you could, you know, just say who you were, what your experience was. You could attach your resume here if you wanted, you could make that its own sections. Uh, basically on the left side are sections, on the right side are pages within the section. So, um, so if I go to my level two practicum here, so here's my lesson plan. Um, you can see right here, I'm on my grammar lesson plan page. So um, I described it and then here's a link. So you could click on it and you could see what my lesson plan was. You would download this um, uh, Word file. And then I also wanted to show a video of me teaching this lesson plan. So if you click on that link, 
Mm. Now here's my embedded video so you could watch me teaching this, this lesson plan. So, and this will be really wonderful, especially with um, with some of our, our level two workshops where we really start providing each other feedback. And uh, that's wonderful, Jennifer. Yeah. And I the, love this that is, pose. I think that would be your, you your powerful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I was getting ready to do, no. The open okay. hand. <laughs> um, but you can see it, there are comments and you can make, uh, you can allow comments or not, and you can make the comments private or public. So there's a lot, lot of options to it. That's so um, it's very simple, um, you know, very easy to do. And let me um, stop this. And I just want to show you what, where you can go if you are currently with us or as soon as you um, register for a course with us, what you can start doing. And so let me share that. Okay, so when you're in Canvas, you come in and here, here is how you get into your classes with us, right? But if you go to your profile, which is right here in the um, Canvas level um, menu, just click on account and you can see right there, it says ePortfolios. So it's something that's available to anybody who is a teacher or student in, uh, in Canvas. And you click on that and it explains it um, right here is where you would start to create an e-portfolio. And it, um, I mean, it's that easy. And then you start creating sections, you start creating pages. And, you know, uh, the nice thing about it is that when you're um, uh, creating your page, you can upload documents, you can create documents, you can you know import videos and then you can if you're a student you can pull assignments from different classes and just plunk them right in there so if you you know if you created a document for a, a class or you created a video you would just pull it and drop it right in there there's you know it's very very simple and elegant so um you know so start thinking if you do something that's just really special and you want to keep it and you want it or you want to share it um just pull it into your e-portfolio so that, that's my I need, I need to break in here because uh a lot of my students at american university who have been on blackboard for years and years uh suddenly we transitioned to canvas and that means all the blackboard courses have disappeared which means they can't get at their assignments from the last several years so having your own spot to keep things from your previous assignments means that uh, even if the course disappears, your stuff will not disappear. Hopefully yeah. not, hopefully. I, d I don't know if it creates just sort of like this um, link that you don't see or if it, you're actually pulling it in there, but because um, I don't really have anything as a student that I could um, practice pulling that in, but um, but at least it, you know, as as long as uh, you know, campus exists, it should be there. So wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. Ah, oh, all kinds of things to share. Anyone else have anything? I wanted to share just what I'm what I have here, and I'll I'll be sharing a bit more about that another time. But uh, Robin was curious what I'm doing here with this. She knows that I don't live in this beautiful apartment that's behind me. <laughs> Uh, what I really have behind me is if I'm here in Zoom and just change over, I do have a, you know, a nice beige wall <laughs> behind me and I can always put my chart up on the wall and I do and I teach with it, right? Um, I took it down though because I found that with this new tool and it does require, you know, pretty much a new computer and a bunch of bandwidth and a bunch of storage, but I found this interesting new tool for those of us that have to make a lot of um, videos this tool called mm hmm everybody say mm hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that i saw an ad for that and i and i, I bookmarked it i thought oh that looks interesting but yeah right, let me see if i can share this better so, yeah so this is a tool that allows me all kinds of options you know i can change these rooms around so it's a little bit more advanced than just um the virtual backgrounds of zoom um that's one fun thing 
Um, but also that I can do all kinds of things as a presenter. You know, I can make myself really small and gesture downward toward what's below me. And I can import slides here um, into the main slide area so that they take up uh, the, the main space. And then I, you know, I can kind of look down at them and gesture to them, like look down there. Um, and so that's just really, it's fascinating because you can also import Google Slides and basically make your, your slideshow very interactive and sort of visually stimulating. I can, you know, put all my images here and pull them up and in and so forth. So I'm just, you know, this is the beginning of my little tech. Uh, this is a little screenshot of Blue Canoe, by the way, which I do for Nancy because she's, she's in the room and was excited about Blue Canoe. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm I, just like Julie is there figuring out what she can do with her space. <laughs> and Dawn is using I'm a little her, person. her fingers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Dawn's got her fingers going. I'm here like figuring out what are the advantages of being able to be fluent in a program like this. And I thought, you know, I'm sharing it with you just because it's always good to know what's coming down the pike, right? Isn't this kind of neat stuff? Um, not that I'm, it's, not, I'm not seeing what you just did. I'm, just, I'm seeing what you're manipulating, but I'm not seeing anything that you're, I'm not seeing the result. Of we just see a white on. screen. Oh, yeah, I just see a white screen. Ah, that's interesting. So I can't share what you want. Okay, what I think I'm doing in front of you. I did this. Oh, now, now that that's something I can I see. can manipulate myself this way and point downward, you know, at this. And then I can, I mean, there's just all kinds of um, goodness that comes along with deciding how I want my space to look. You look like um, you were out in the waves, Karen. <laughs> I know, huh? Yeah. So it's it's still new and some of it seems gimmicky, but it, some of it seems kind of very different and, and worthwhile. Um, plus, it's just good to try something new when you think you know it all uh, with your tech. <laughs> And so a lot of Fridays at five for those who are, are visiting today, as uh, we often share teaching and tech tools together. Um, and I, you know, I really like taking that contrast between what Julie showed us at the beginning of this session today is just let's let's have everything ready to put right up there. And, and I say that to Dawn too, just beautiful. And then when we have to teach online like this, why would I want to have a, a back, you know, is this just is this just being playful? Um, or is there some advantage to this kind of, you know, work if I bring in um, a nice big, I don't know, an image here that I want to talk about a great day for a minute, meaning how many hours can somebody spend watching you on video? And does this help them be more interested? <laughs> I don't know. so much like a Monty Python thing. <laughs> video. <laughs> So we can finish up, you know, let's finish up with a, a little chant. <laughs> We're Karen, delighted. And Karen, yeah. um, now asked, and I, I, I want to know too, can you repeat what the name of this software is? Better than repeating, I'd better write it because how do you spell mm-hmm? <laughs> <laughs> In this case, it's double M H double M dot com. Um, again, I don't recommend trying to download it if you have any remotely old computer. You won't have the space and it won't run on it. It likes brand new Macs. And I happen to have had the pleasure of getting a brand new Mac recently. So uh, it's, it, it's not something I'm recommending exactly so much as modeling, looking at the next tech that I can do. And we all need to be stretching in our own directions. Okay. <laughs> I love the way you're underwater. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's, it does. It's visually engaging, right? It's a little weird. It really, really is. All right. Well, hey, let's <laughs> let's finish up. So, what do we do with Blue Canoe? Hey, These are screenshots. But the other thing that I really appreciate is that I've got Jennifer always close by, so that when um, something like mm "hmm" is not as fancy as I want it to be, I can always go back to really simple sharing. So I can share right now my. Um, my iPhone and we can actually do, <laughs> there it is, there's my phone. Um, I can share my phone and when I do that, we think, well, maybe not, there we go. I'm going to, oh, it's so fancy. I just can't handle it. Let's see, trust. 
okay, I'm not going to do this in front of people. It's not going well. Yeah, so some, sometimes it forgets. It forgets, it forgets that it trusts that you trusted it. Okay. So this, this is why I'm so I'm just I'm now I'm just emptying out my screen. I don't know what that's, I'm doing. That's why I, f I find when um for those of you with Macs and I, I I'm pretty sure it's possible with um you know uh, other equipment, but I found with the iPhone it likes to actually be hardwired to your Mac and then you can share it that way, whereas the um the iPad seems to to be fine if you share via airplay so that might not mean it to you if you're not a, a mac person but there i'm doing it okay do it. i just have to persevere and I, I almost lost my confidence so thank you for your patience all right so here just finishing up with one round of blue canoe why not uh, let's see what the understanding lesson is like <laughs> what i've been doing <laughs> lately what i've been doing yeah i apologize for the confusion um, what I've been doing lately is trying to play this like an instrument, and that's because I always have music on my mind. Um, and so what I've just done is, by the way, I just swiped up this way to adjust my light so that I can show you my screen here in, in the screen as well. So you can see me and you can see the screen close up, right? Yeah, it's kind of fun. All right. And then what I can do is model. I apologize for the confusion. I apologize, I apologize for the confusion. confusion. I apologize for the confusion. Everyone. I apologize for the confusion. Then I can go ahead and practice hearing. Olive sock apologize. Olive sock apologize. Olive sock apologize. Olive sock apologize. I like four because that's when my brain wants to yell stop. <laughs> <laughs> so then I go on to something else. I go back to the sentence. I apologize for the confusion. 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 And I do the other one. Blue moon confusion. Blue moon confusion. Blue moon confusion. Blue moon confusion. One more time. I apologize for the confusion. Should I record? I apologize for the confusion. I'd better get 100%. <laughs> By the time a learner has gone through that many repetitions, they're not just Yay! Hey, they're not just mastering that one sentence, right? It's not just about these words or this sentence. It's about internalizing the rhythm of English that is uh, represented in that model. And then being able to say, well, I can hear, I apologize for confusing you, or I apologize that I was late, or whatever the thing is. But we start to hear the song of apologizing, right? So that's what's been on, on my mind lately. And that's what I'm, I thought I would share with you is playing blue canoe like an instrument in ways that kind of annoy me, but also wake up my brain. Yeah. 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 It's all about the brain all about the brain when i get to the point where i want to run away from it then i know i've done something interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like what julie said uh, gee you're doing such a good job you sound just like that lady on blue canoe <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> thank you i i try i try to match her um so well thank you everybody for joining us it's five minutes after the hour we always love seeing you on a friday it certainly makes my day jennifer we're coming up on one year uh, Fridays at five, right? Uh, um, it was March 27th. So yeah, another week or so, it'll be a whole year that we've been with only a few Fridays where we've not done it. I think it was like Christmas. <laughs> One day off that we took yeah. in Christmas, maybe. And maybe, maybe in in july or something Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's been you know this is something we started with of course the pandemic um everyone has responded amazingly and now it's kind of hard to think about a friday without getting together with you so what's next week next week <laughs> good question good question you know hold on let me let me see. Hold on. We didn't put out a March newsletter because we've been a little busy. So, <laughs> so we're gonna get a March or March April newsletter out really soon. Um, I have just posted a couple more workshops over there in our uh, website. Oh. 
And if you want to see, I mean, ones that are on the tally, but in case you're ever wondering where to go, just remember that you can go to our training page and that is the perfect place to find pretty much everything in one. Let me see if I can share it over here. I think uh, I have, I found it. Um, we were hoping to have a special for accent coaches. That's right. Uh -huh. We're going we're gonna to aim for that for another month, I think, because we need time to pull those people together. But I, I do have some other ideas that we'll, we'll brainstorm. Can I announce something? I'm doing um, a week from tomorrow. That's uh, March 20th uh, for uh, American University TESOL program. I'm doing a, a three-hour workshop uh, Saturday morning on Structure of English, Mysteries of the Lexicon. Okay. And so... Uh, you can sign up on the American University TESOL page. Great. If you have a link, Robin, stick that in the chat. I thought I sent it to you, but I must be wrong. <laughs> oh, you may have sent it, but I, yeah, uh, the chat would be great. We will try to post that on the website uh, or in our newsletter. Ooh, time to go, losing my voice. But anyway, <laughs> it is easy to find these, uh, these uh, events here. And then down below is where you can sign up for anything coming up. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Be safe, be healthy, and we'll be seeing yeah. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for joining us, Charlene. Thanks, coming, thanks for coming, Robin. I was outside putting um, fertilizer down and forgot what time it was. <laughs> it was such a beautiful day. Do we have anybody signed up for the April workshop?